OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for part two, CK12 integration. This is a um, this is a second series. Um, we have a third series for you, which is coming up. I'm Netta Anasari. I'm a technology projects coordinator uh, for OTAN, and I'm going to hand it to Debbie, who's going to introduce herself, and then Lindsay. So, Debbie. I'm Debbie Jensen, and I've worked in adult ed for 33 years um, in basic skills. Um, down in Southern California. Um, currently, I work for OTAN and um, I love what I do and I love CK12. So I'm really excited to share that with you today. Hi, everybody. I'm Lindsay from CK12. And uh, CK12 is based out of California, but I'm coming to you live from Overland Park, Kansas today. Um, I've worked for CK12 for about six years. Uh, before that, I spent 10 years teaching um, English and video production in a high school, public high school. Um, so it's been so awesome working with Debbie and Netta on um, this project and trying to um, create books that are specially designed for adult learners. Um, so happy to be your CK12 uh, point person on um, anything adult education. Thank you, Debbie and Lindsay. Hey, uh, confirm for me, uh, Debbie, if you can see my slides or the slides. Yes, I can Perfect. see them. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're so happy uh, again to kind of recap and share that we do have a home on the CK12 website, ck12.org slash adult ed. And Lindsay shared with you our partnership and we're very grateful. And you probably heard it in part one, so I won't spend too much time on it. But really the idea is to um, the, the resources and the material on the CK12 website is valuable and helpful and useful in adult ed. And how do we how do we use it right and how do we kind of um, know that this is a place where we can find resources for our adult learners and so ck12 listened and they they helped us create a page um, that will lead our educators and our students um, to access those materials so um, we're super grateful for ck12 we're super grateful to have lindsay and we're very grateful to have debbie as our leader to uh, create some of this material that we're going to share with you today um, so this is a URL just as a reminder. Today's objectives, um, we really want to show you how you can use CK12 in your classroom. So we're going to take a quick kind of review. I've already reviewed the website for you and I'm going to review a couple more slides um, of what we talked about last uh, week as far as uh, part one. And then how do you join? Um, we're going to take you live into a Flexbook. Um, we want to show you how to customize resources. So whether you're using it as, um, you know, full on material to for your students um, that you have an economic student or you have a student that's working on algebra and those are resources but maybe you just want to customize and use partial resources we're going to show you all of that today and then um lindsay's going to show us some live customization and then share with us um, some of the contact information as well so it's going to be jam-packed full of good information on how to proceed and how to create content or um, how to create your materials on ck12 quick review ABE resources already available already at your fingertips. Of course, it's not limited to the four books that you see on the adult ed page on CK12, but it's a start. And so you have foundational math, math, math for adult basic ed, and then pre-algebra. And those are books that are ready to pick up and go. Um, and, and then, like I said, we'll show you a little bit more of customization and what that looks like. But um, if you don't wanna do that, and if you don't wanna look through some of the um, other re helpful resources that CK12 might have, this is a good way to start. So um, thanks to Debbie and Lindsay for helping us um, create these, pay these books and making them accessible um, for our uh, educators in California. Now, um, they'll kind of share with you as well that, you know, they may have found books that were already created and then they kind of moved them over to the adult ed page. And those are things that we can do on CK12 as well. Again, the adult secondary items are also available for high school diploma and high school equivalency. So if you have students that are struggling in government, 
you have resources and a book to help support them there. If you have students that are struggling in chemistry, you have you have resources that can help you there. Um, and we know our adult um, ed students need additional supplemental materials here, materials here and there. So um, this is a great way to start. If you are offering high school equivalency classes and you need additional support for algebra or additional support, I know when I was in the classroom, I needed additional support for my students in science and social studies. So those are all additional items that you can find um, for your students on the CK-12 website. Okay, so that's a quick kind of recap of what we discussed last week, but we're going to go into kind of live and um, some demos and how to get started. And I'm going to hand it over to Lindsay, who's going to take us away with that. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, before we make sure that everybody's signed in and joined and all that kind of stuff, there is a question that I just got in the q and um, asking about our nonprofit status. So this is a good time to remind everybody that um, the CK12 Foundation is a nonprofit, a non-revenue nonprofit. Um, so you're not going to see any advertising on our site. Um, there's 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 no trick to it as far as um, you, we're never going to ask for any of your uh, credit card information, things like that. We are free resources for everyone. Um, and as far as how we're funded, we are funded by a family foundation. It's very generous. Um, they've been supporting us since 2007. And so we're going to continue um, that support for the years years to come. So uh, we, we're a nonprofit that's lucky that we aren't um, constantly looking for donations, that money's always been in place. And it's just we're trying to be strategic about how um, to best use it to impact education. And uh, I can tell you, our founder is so excited about adult education. Um, we've really gone all in and we're trying to Again, this is this is the getting started mode, and then we're really looking for um, strategic partners in the space to help us make these books better. Um, so you know, identify areas where we can help with some training, um, you know, and, and and show some of your colleagues uh, how to use CK twelve. Um, we're not we're not selling anything. It's truly just getting the word out, spreading it. Um, and hoping that these books are gonna save educators time and then um, be really great learning uh, for your adult learners. So last week, and I, I wish I knew how many of you are here from last week, and I don't think I really have any way of judging that, but um, the, the first part here, I'm just gonna do a little bit of review, um, and then we're gonna talk specifically about customization, and most of that's gonna be new, because I didn't really get into a lesson last time and show you all the things that you can do to a lesson. So keep in mind that a lot of today, like Netta said, we have resources ready for you to grab and go. So if you are not interested and you don't have the bandwidth to do a lot of lot more work to your books, you absolutely don't have to. Um, but I'm hoping to uh, intrigue you a little bit by the capabilities so that you might be enticed to, um, to to do some localization specifically for your students. So first things first, let's make sure that um, you guys have all signed up or signed in. Um, I'm actually gonna go live to the site and let me show this because um, it's probably just as easy. Oh, it says I can't start my screen. So let's try now. Oh, Zoom. Um, I am looking for my screen to share. Okay, here we go. You guys should be looking at the CK12 homepage. And I have signed in to a demo account and you can tell that I've signed in because it has my name in the upper right hand corner. And I am signed in as a teacher, which I would encourage all of you to do if you're playing the educator role. Um, and this is the view that I get. So if you have not signed in yet, um, go ahead and sign in. You've got options. You can sign in using Google. You can sign in with other single sign-ons. Um, I can show you how I have set up my account, um, which again is a demo account. Uh, you have options to put in your name. Um, you know, that's the email address I'm using. You can tell that I have signed on with Google. You could sign on with Facebook, Twitter, or you Microsoft users. You can just do that single click sign on as well. Um, you can select your time zones. And then this is where you're gonna find some information about how you wanna communicate with CK12. So you have some control over your notifications. Um, and then if you ever wanted to do some deactivation and things like that, that's all here in your account. Um, if you aren't sure if you are a teacher or a student, under profile, if I say change profile, it's gonna pop up a box 
And it shows me here that I'm a teacher. So if you signed up as a student and you wanna change that to the teacher role, you're able to do that here. Um, this information is all kind of optional. Uh, it's just to have our system kind of serve up some recommendations for you that are, that are catered to your um, subjects and whatnot. Um, add, a pro add a profile photo if you would like. Um, and then that's, that should keep you signed in. Um, you'll occasionally be signed out where you'll, where you'll need to sign in. Um, your students, if you are using a learning management system, which I know a lot of you are, if you're using Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, um, our partnership with those learning management systems make it so your students don't have to create accounts on CK12. When they click on the assignment from Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, um, our systems will talk to each other and they, they don't need to be doing anything separate on CK12. If you are not using Google Classroom, Canvas or Schoology, then you might wanna consider creating classes on CK12 that are totally free, anybody can use. You can build classes for many students or just a couple of students if you're tutoring or even if you're working with your own, um, own children at home. Uh, you can create individual classes to kind of track their progress. Um, so if students have a class code, uh, there's lots of different ways for them to join. If you're creating a class, you can um, give everybody a, I believe it's a five or six digit code that they would type in to join the class, or you have the option to email information out to them to get them to join as well. Um, so type in the Q&A if, if you still have, let me try to pull up the Q&A again. Um, if, if you still have, let's see. There is a question. How does this work if I'm creating a master class for other teachers to use as well? Um, interesting. So we, if you're using a CK12 class, um, you have the option to have a co-teacher involved in your class. Um, but in general, your account is pretty specific to you, the user. Um, we we don't do a whole lot of collaboration for a variety of reasons. So if you, you can't, as like a department chair, create a bunch of accounts and blast them out to everybody, they would really, um, the, the, the teacher who's wanting to track the student's progress would need to create um, their own classes and get their students in there. Um, but like I said, you can come down to um, like the members of a class and you have the option to um, add a co-teacher um, to have visibility into this class as well. Um, okay, so I'm going to press this logo. You're going to see me doing this a lot. I like this, the CK12 logo to go back to my homepage here. And last week, again, we dove in a little bit. I encouraged you to use this explore menu. I showed you what a simulation looks like. I showed you what a Plix looks like. Um, the schools page where you can find other books that are near you. And then um, encouraged you to use the search bar to search for things. Um, I'm gonna just look up language arts because that's an area that CK12 is fairly light in as um, specialists in the math and science areas. Um, and I told you that you can come over here to this community contributed tab. And this is just everything CK12 has, but when I come over to community contributed, there are um, books that our users have submitted here that I may want to use. Um, this sixth grade language arts book, I don't know anything about it. It's written by Lauren B. I could open it up. Um, I can see that this was created or it was last modified in 2020. Um, it actually looks like a combination of some of the CK12 materials we have. Um, but anyway, I can open up these books, learn about them, uh, look in here and see if I want to use anything for my own books. So you're gonna be able to take content from other people and add it to a Flexbook that you create. So more on that in a minute. Um, for now, now that you know how to search, you're signed in, you know where to find the Explore menu with lots of our different resources. Um, again, if I scroll down here, I get to the, what do you want to teach today? And any of these adult ed topics take me to that ck12.org slash adult ed page. And so Netta just walked you through some of our offerings here, which is just our, our starter content. I would love it if any of you start working on some other subjects um, in the adult ed world, like we will get your books featured up here. Um, it, it's just, again, a paying forward. A, if you're gonna spend all the time creating it, we would love for others to be able to, um, to modify for their needs and take advantage of it. Um, let's dive, let me, uh, uh, I don't know what book I wanna jump into. Let's uh, jump into biology for a minute. So this is our Flexbook 2.0 platform. And uh, about two and a half years ago, 
we switched over from our original flex books where if you were paying attention to that ELA, that book was an original flex book. And then this is a Flexbook 2.0. What's the difference? Um, our Flexbook 2.0 has brought in all the resources together and really integrated them in an easy to use, super intelligent platform. Um, so most of what we're gonna be talking about today or pretty much all of what we're gonna be talking about today um, is gonna be here in a Flexbook 2.0. Uh, let's see which of these look interesting. Cell structure. Um, you get other ways to learn a lesson. And then when I start the lesson, our lessons look like this, where there's an image at the top. Sometimes there are things embedded like a video, or again, maybe you're gonna see a simulation or a plix. I showed you the adaptive practice that's attached and we can talk about how to swap that out with a quiz that you create. I showed you how you can use the different languages down here to instantly translate into other languages. And then this toolbar is where we're going to be spending a lot of time today talking more about um, this customization, adding things to Flexbooks 2.0, um, making sure that you know that you can download your books as a PDF if you need to. Um, so don't forget that you've got a toolbar here with um, the learning tools for students as far as you know being able to do notes and highlights or seeing some of that related content. Um, but we're, we're going to be down here. Um, also, if it helps with your students too, under the more category, we do have some display settings. Um, they're not maybe as robust as I would like. I'd love to build on this, but you can um, increase the size of the font um, or decrease, which helps if you're like projecting or, or not. And then um, students can also select um, you know, a background or their line spacing. So that's individual to each account. So they have their own choices on their display setting. So that's just a few things to show you. Hopefully that's a good kind of warm up. Um, use, use the Q&A window to type in some of those questions, but I'm gonna let, um, I, I think I'm handing it back to Debbie, who's going to really start talking about um, the steps to customization of if you see something on our site and you say, that's great, but I wanna make a few modifications, um, we're gonna show you how to, how to do that. Thank you. Um, let's go to slide nine. One more. There you go. All right. And I'll share my experience of how I got with CK12. And I was an ABE teacher and I needed math. And so that's where I started. Um, the ways you can search, you can search by subjects, you can search by explore, you can use the search box. But I also want to tell you that you can use Google. And then if you were using Google, you would write in the topic and then you'd put the colon and you'd put CK12. And they will then find all the materials, the resources at CK12 that will fit your need. And so they will look. And, and I've used that many, many times to get that. All right, so we're looking for a resource. That's what it, where I started and I wanted to look for a resource. Next slide. Let me show you which one of them that I started. Um, that, uh, well, let me show you this one. Okay. This is one that is currently under our high school equivalency. It's called Algebra Basics for High School Equivalency. And let's say you look at it and you say, this is good. This is, this is good. Um, so I'm going to look at this. And when I click on that Choose button, that's green right there in the center. And when you look at the, um, the menu that, the, that comes, you see Customize. But we're not going to do that yet. First, I want to just add it to my library because your library is like this repository of things that you found. It's like um, if you go in a library and you just grab all the books off the shelf that you may wanna look at someday and you put them all in your library, then you can find them easily when you come back. And so the first step is to add it to your library, okay? So the other things though that are also in this same button, you can assign it, you can customize it. We'll go over that in a few minutes. You can share it, but also notice down there where it says download PDF. Sometimes you need a hard copy, and this can be done that way as well. And so that's wonderful. Next slide. Okay. When I clicked on customize, then this is the next thing that I get. And these are the things that I can do. I can change the name of the book, which is super cool because then I can say it's Debbie's math class, or I can say it's Baldwin Park Adult and Community Education math class. Um, I can say anything. I can name the book, um, change the cover. I can edit or delete lessons and I can rearrange them. 
And for me in math, this was really important because I didn't teach in the same order as the lessons that were there. And so I could rearrange them and you can add your own. And that is not hard. So you're established teacher, you've got lessons that you like. And so rather than making this an addendum to your stuff, you can put your stuff in here. Um, and one of the teachers that I read her um, uh, testimonial was that she loved the fact that she no longer had to take a whole bunch of stuff home. She put it all in the CK-12 and was able to work from there. And so you can do that. Next slide. Um, these are the ones that I did at the very beginning when I made my math B class. And all I did was I changed the image and I changed the name and I was good to go. Um, so let's go to the next one. Be sure you save, so you click on save, save so you've got it. Um, also, Lindsay taught me this. I was always going back to the CK12 logo to move around, to get to the various places on, um, on the screen. But if you go over to your name, there's a little drop down menu right there. And you can go to the dashboard, but you can go to my classes or you can go to my library right there. And so that cuts a lot of steps out. And so that is very, very convenient. So definitely use that shortcut. Next slide. Um, if you do have an LMS system, um, I used Google Classroom. And so I wasn't so interested in setting up my own, uh, to setting up a classroom in um, CK12. So there are, um, you can use Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology. And when you use those, they will automatically put the grade into your, uh, for me, it was my Google Classroom. Let me show you that. Let's go to the next slide and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, oh, this slide's first. Let me do this slide first. But if you do not have Schoology or you don't have Canvas or you don't have um, Google Classroom, you can set up a class here. And then all of the wonderful features that we're gonna show you, all of the insights, all the automatic grading, all of those things will be here. And so it's very, very simple to do that. Now we did have a question about, well, what happens if I have Moodle? You can link uh, CK12 to all of these places, but that automatic grading, you'll still have to go back to CK12 for that feature. So you'd have to go back there to get it. Um, okay, so let's go to the next slide. And this was my experience when I used Google Cl Classroom. And I, it was my ABE math class. And, that, and you can see in the center one where it has circled the CK12 lesson that I put in. Okay, and next slide. Then you'll see the grade book and you'll see the score. So when the student did it, the score automatically went here. So that was, that was pretty amazing. Okay, next slide. Now, that was what I did originally, which wasn't much. I rearranged a few things. I may have taken out one lesson, but for the most part, it was CK-12 the way the CK-12 was, just a little rearranging, changing the name, and that was, that was my book. But then I wanted to create a new one. And this one, there was no course that I could just take readily from um, CK-12. I wanted to create a course called cosmetology for my cosmetology department. Okay, so this is what I did. First, I searched for skin and nails. I gathered everything I could get from CK-12 into my library. And then I looked at them because CK-12 has written material at different levels. They've got middle school, they've got high school, and they've got college. And so, especially with cosmetology, I needed to know and this would be a cosmetology teacher that would be the final say on this. If I were to let you look at my uh, cosmetology course right now, you would see that there are three lessons on nails. And that's because they're at different reading levels and different, uh, the depth of content. That's okay. You can take out what you want to take out. You can add what you want to, and you can then utilize what is there. Let's go to the next slide. Um, another tip on search, there up at the top, and um, Lindsay showed you this, was the toolbar. It's the little uh, grid or waffle pattern. When you go there, you're able to add things to your library right from this screen. That's very convenient. Um, and you can, uh, so 
you can also customize from this screen. And so this screen is useful um, and you'll refer to it. Next slide. Okay, so I started up, I started with the lesson on skin and health and I gave it a name. It wasn't called skin and health, it was a lesson in a biology book. And so I gave it the, the name cosmetology. Um, I selected the plus button where it says create a new flex book and they give you a choice a regular flex book or a flex book 2.0. You want the 2.0 because that's going to make it real simple for you to add your videos and all of these other things. So definitely do that. I added my title. I clicked on save. Next slide. Now in the center of your table of contents, it says add, and then in green, it says chapter, and then in blue, new read, and then there's an or search from CK12 library. Okay. So on the next slide, you see what happened when I clicked from um, New Read. And I then added it to my Flexbook. Um, and this is where it came. All of the new things that you gather will go to the bottom of the screen. That's just the, the place that they all come to. OK, so let's go to the next slide. So the first thing, after you've added all of these things, at the, the next thing you're going to want to do is rearrange them. And so you see the thing that looks like two arrows that are crossed. And that is how you're going to rearrange them. Um, at this point, they are all equal. And what we want to do is we want to make some of them chapters, which is like a heading. And then the next part would be the lessons inside that chapter. So the first thing is to rearrange them. So what you see here is that I took the nails and hair and I moved it up to the middle. Okay, so that's the first thing I did is I just rearranged them. Okay, next slide. Two terminologies that I want you to know, two terms. There is a little arrow beside the number one and that's how you open up a chapter. Okay, if there's something that is inside it as lessons, that's what you're going to click to find it. And the second one, is over at two, there's a little pencil icon. It's like an edit, and that's great. But all it does is change the title of that. It doesn't go into your um, lessons and being able to modify and change lessons. I'll show you where that is. Okay, so now let's go to the next slide. Okay, the way that you're going to make it so that lessons are inside chapters is the three dots that are at the very end. Then what that does is it op uh, we opened up the menu and it said it's listed all of your um, headings, okay? They're all chapters, but they're all there. And so if I want nails to go inside nails and hair, then that's where I would click on, okay? And then on the second picture there on the slide, it shows you that under nails and hair, now I have a 2.1, a 2.2, and a 2.3, okay? So those three dots are going to allow you to make chapters with lessons inside them, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Now, I'm done. I gathered my material. I threw it all in. I rearranged it. And then I subheaded some of them. Some of them were lessons and some of them are chapter heads. And so I take a look at this and I say, okay, I've got skin, I've got nails and hair. Yes, I've got my lessons inside. I've got the diseases, I've got the lesson inside. And then I've got this really big one that's college level. And this is cool. And so I've got all of that there. I'm gonna finalize. And so the button on the left at the top says finalize. And then you get the next screen and I will save, okay? Next slide. Now, you're finished, unless you find something else. And the super, super cool thing here is that anytime you want to add something, you can. This is not like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm done. I, I, I don't dare add anything more. No, no. This is my textbook right now. Those are the chapters. The lessons are indented inside. And so if I clicked on those arrows, then you would see the lessons. So right now, I'm done. I'm ready to use this with my students unless I find something else I want to add. Okay, next slide. Just a couple more things, and then I'm going to let Lindsay show you this whole thing live. There are really wonderful things that teachers have created. 
And this was one that I showed last week, but it's, it's one of my very favorites. She wanted her adult students to know how to use CK-12. And so she created a series of videos that she then put in on how to uh, introduction to the lessons, how do the lessons work, um, how to take notes, how to annotate, um, how to change languages, everything she thought that maybe the, the students might be confused about. Now, you think, well, that's wonderful, but I don't have time to create it. But the philosophy of CK-12 is let's share. These are educational resources for all of us so that we don't keep recreating the wheel. So that if I've done this cosmetology search and it took a while to gather everything, I don't want you to have to do that. You use mine, you add what you want, you take my base and then you take it to your level of adding your own lessons and things like that. So it's wonderful. So these things that you see, you can use as well. Next slide. Now, the other thing that was new to me that is magnificent, and I'm just gonna tell you really quickly about it. Well, there's two on this slide. Okay, where one is that quote lower left, that guy's called Flexi and he's there to help the students. And he's going to help them in marvelous ways, giving them hints, telling them, um, maybe they're getting things wrong. And so he will tutor them through, but then he will also then give maybe a little easier problems, or maybe they're getting everything right. And so a little harder problems. And all of these things are being recorded for you as a teacher so that you can know what the student's doing and how well the student's doing. So Flexi is there for the students. For you, the teacher is up at the top on the right, and it's like a lightning bolt. They call it the, um, well, they call it the lightning bolt icon. And it opens up the insights. Now, I knew there were insights, but I'd never seen them because I didn't set a class up and then get it going fast enough to be able to use this and see it. So what the brilliant people at CK12 did is they created a demo class. And so when you open that, you can click on the left, you see where it says try demo class and you can click on that. And then they're gonna show you what the insights look like for a class. And, and you'll be able to see what's there. Okay, let's go to the next slide and show you what you're gonna see when you click on that lightning bolt. You're going to see um, a, a graph showing where the students are, which ones they're having troubles with. Down below, you'll see the students that haven't finished. You'll also see the number of uh, those that have turned in, the assignment have, have finished up. There's nine out of 11 that have done it. You can get individual work on what each one has done it. Um, they're listed by performance levels from uh, low to high. Okay, and let us go to the next slide. This is super. And then the, you get this too. And this is, they will, these are their insights and their recommendations. Only three out of nine students who turned in this assignment have reached the adaptive practice goal of answering 10 questions correctly. We recommend to you that you remind the students that they need to answer all 10 questions correctly. Okay, and then they do have the list of the students that um, great, did get it done. Then the next one, um, the top four questions, students answered incorrectly or noted below. See, that's really useful to you to know which questions the students aren't getting because so then you can readdress them and be able to help them with that. And then they will even tell you the students that are doing exceptionally well. And so you may want to assign them the next concept to keep them challenged. So all of those insights are there for you. It's, it's like, whoa, they help the students succeed in the work and then they help you in succeeding in the teaching. So it's really cool. Now, we wanted to spend some time now with letting Lindsay show you how to do this customization live. So I'm turning it back over to her and then you will be able to please ask your questions and we'll, we'll uh, let her know the questions in the, in the um, question and answer so that we can uh, help you with that. Go ahead, Lindsay. Absolutely. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Um, we should be back on the adult ed page. Um, let me make sure my chat window and the Q and A is open. I'll try to keep an eye on that um, while I'm demoing. Please, any 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 questions? Of as you can see, like CK12, we're a really really robust platform. Um, there's so much content on so many different areas, and then you've got the things that CK12 has created over time, and then the hundreds of thousands of resources that our users have created over time. Um, so it's it's a lot of stuff, 
Um, so let's let's break it down into small bits here. And I'd like to talk first about customization, and then I'm sure there will be some questions um, more about what Debbie was showing with with assignments um, and checking student progress and that kind of thing. But let's let's try to try to stay focused on um, if you found a book that you like, what do you do with it to make it your own? Um, so I'm on the adult education page and we're assuming that maybe some of these books are where you would like to get a start. If you're not seeing anything on this page that um, excites you and you want to create a book from scratch, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, you can definitely start with a blank slate and you can bring in content, either your own content or um, content from the CK12 platform into um, your own Flexbook. But let me scroll down. Um, let's 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 choose something to customize. Let's go into algebra basics for high school equivalency. And so once again, I'm in a 2.0 flexbook here. Some information that you get. This says that this was last modified on February 13th, 2021. You've got a little description about this book. And then under authors, this is interesting because um, CK12 authored a lot of this content. Um, Sean Reagan, who was a contractor and is now a CK12 employee, he authored some of this content. And then Shanna Friend, who's a CK12 certified educator, she started customizing this for her GED students. And then Debbie and Otan came along and further customized that book uh, to, to make this algebra basics for high school equivalency book that you see right now. Okay. And so you're going to see things um, like these flexbook features. Debbie showed you a screenshot of this. Uh, this was created by Shanna. And this could be something that you want to keep in your book or you might want to delete it. And so I'll show you how to do that. Um, and all of these chapters are expandable and you could immediately go straight into the lessons. So again, if you want to use this book as is, cool. You can share it. You can download it as a PDF. You can grab the link up here and copy and paste the link and share it with people. Um, you've got all those options ready to go. But I think a lot of you are gonna wanna do some basic customization. So I'm going to click customize on this book. And again, I don't know if you have two screens open and you're following along with me, great. Or if you just wanna sit back and relax and watch the demo and try to do it later, that's great too. Um, when I select customize, what it's doing is, is it's basically making a copy of this book into my own personal library. You see library up here. It's going to store all of the stuff that I start creating. So this book that was CK12, Sean, Shanna, Debbie, um, it's now going to be Lindsay too. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, Ms. Kincaid's Algebra Basics for High School Equivalency. Or maybe I think that's too long. I'm going to use HSE. Okay, so you can add a title, you can change the cover, you can change the image, um, and then you start getting into the scope and sequence, where this is really where I recommend um, you start. I think this is the logical place, is to, to look at this book that you've decided to customize and see, does it make sense for what I'm teaching my students? Um, does it match uh, what I'm trying to cover in my semester or my year? Um, or unit by unit. Um, if you know that you're never going to get to polynomials, this is the nice thing about a digital flex book is I can just remove the whole chapter on polynomials. Um, and I say, hey, we're not going to get to functions either. That's, that's, that's just not on our agenda. I could remove that. Um, and then slopes way down here at eight, but um, I'm going to do that prior to inequalities. So you can see here how I am rearranging using these handles to drag and drop that works either at the chapter level or within the lessons um, inside of a chapter. So I can just move these around and it renumbers. I can move things uh, in between chapters where it probably doesn't make much sense to put this inequalities into slope, but I'm gonna do it because it's my book and I can do what I wanna do. Um, so I just moved it up to slope and there it is. Um, this is all what's going on at the chapter level. And like Debbie said, this uh, pencil and paper gives you some options to edit the chapter title. And then you can also edit the chapter description, which shows up at the top of the book um, and do some basic things like that. I don't spend much time doing much at the chapter level. Um, it's more at this table of contents level or in an individual lesson. 
Um, so some things here. All right, maybe I've got this book kind of how I want it. Um, but I don't think, uh, well here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add my own introduction here. So I'm gonna add a new, what we call read. And I'm gonna call it uh, um, Lindsay's uh, online class procedures. Well, that's kind of boring and daunting. Um, and so here is the basic lesson that I've put under introduction. And I can go in there and I can add that at any time, um, add, add to that lesson at any time. If you are wanting to blend some books and you're thinking, hey, I know CK12 has some great resources uh, on polynomial. Shoot, I didn't mean to delete it from my book. I, I actually wanted that polynomials in here. You can come in and you can search polynomials. Um, you can search CK12. Um, I can search within Flexbooks. I can look for individual reads. Um, and then I can also look in my library. Um, I, I think Debbie's way of using CK12 is really cool where she, she kind of does the bookmarking method, right? She finds resources she likes on CK12. She adds them to her library. And then she can always just come over here to library and pull those resources into her book. Um, if you, uh, you know, I said, hey, we're just going to be talking about mul multiplying polynomials. I can add this to my book and it just inserts it as a lesson down at the bottom. And then it's up to me to create a new chapter or to drag it into the chapter that it applies. So that's one way to use this search for CK12 library, um, a new read or a new um, chapter. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and save this for a minute. And when I save it, remember nothing is ever final on CK12. I can continue to edit it whenever I would like. I haven't published this book yet, so it's not available to, um, for everybody to search and find it. That's, that's an option at the end when you actually select publish. Uh, let me go to my library. I'm gonna show you where this book lives in the library. It should be the, the top thing here. Here's my, here's my algebra basics for high school. Shows that it was just updated um, right here. I, I can go in and change the metadata to you know, get rid of the grades and things like that. Um, so at any time I wanna continue editing this book, this is one place to do it. I would just click on this book again and choose instead of customize, since I already started customizing, from here on out, I'm going to see edit. So I could just edit and it would take me right back into that um, book mode, you know, table of contents to edit. I'm going to actually go back to your library and show you a different way to approach things. Um, if you are like Debbie and you're thinking I'm going to do something, you know, she, she just created her cosmetology book. Um, I'm going to create a Flexbook 2.0 book. Um, I taught a year of IB Film Studies, International Baccalaureate Film Studies. And um, I don't believe CK12 has a whole lot that would um, make sense to bring into this, but I can go ahead and just create my own book from scratch. So I'm gonna call this IB Film Studies. And um, eventually I would get interested in changing the cover. Um, resources, this is where I could add some additional resources. It's a great place if you have like a PDF you know, syllabus or something you want to add in, you can do that. And then I can come in and I can start changing the details of this book to say, you know, what this looks like. And we've talked about, we need to, you know, kind of de-emphasize this grades and make a category that's appropriate for the adult learners. Um, but I can come in here and add subjects and attributions and all that kind of, all those kind of things in that tab. Okay. When I save this, we're going to go back out to my pretty empty looking IB film studies book. Okay, um, so I can come in, I can edit, and I can start adding chapters and reads and everything else. Um, another way though to do this is, so keep in mind, I, I've set up this book, all right? Now let me go back out to the homepage. And um, I know there are some cool lessons on photography that I think would like apply to my film studies as far as composition. Um, yeah, histograms, a view through a lens. Um, these, these, things, these things all work for me. Um, let me, building your own portfolio, uh, that looks exciting. When I click on something, 
that I like, and I look at this and I say, oh, this is perfect for my, for my book. Remember this toolbar up here and that ability to add to a Flexbook 2.0? This is another way to get content into your book. You can either do it from the table of contents and search CK12, or when you're on a resource that you like, you can click add to Flexbook 2.0, and it's going to ask you, do you want to create a new Flexbook, or do you want to put it in one that you already have? And I'm going to say, oh, well, this is the perfect lesson to go in my IB film studies book. Success. It's added. Okay. So let's test that theory. I'm going to go back to my library. And I'm going to open up my IB film studies book. And there you go. We've got this one random read kind of hanging out there. That um, is my photography read. That's the start of my IB film studies book. Okay, so um, I'm hoping that that answers questions as far as how to click customize and get started on editing a book or to go to your library and create a new book. Definitely go with Flexbook 2.0. It's just the newest version of a book and it will have the most capability with those insights. So um, work on that. And then you can start building your book. Um, I'm looking at, uh, let's see, the questions in the Q&A. Uh, let's, let's talk uh, the, the rules to what you can add real quick. Um, we just updated our license which I don't know if any of you are lawyers, I am not, but there's all kinds of fun legal information down here talking about the CK-12 curriculum license that you can read. And then there's also the attribution guidelines of if you are pulling from other sources, how to correctly make sure that you are um, giving them the credit that they need for that content. Um, so this is here available for you at the bottom of every page that you can look at. Um, in, and kind of educator speak, I'll just tell you that um, we, are, we are in that open resource state where you are able to pull in resources from places that are also open um, and their license allows them to be remixed and shared in a different way. So what doesn't work is copying a, a Pearson PDF and uploading it to our site or, um, uh, taking a, uh, you know, <laughs> a, a video that you, you, you downloaded that's, that's Disney that you are putting into the book, um, that's, that's not a good idea. Um, images that you have taken from the web that clearly are not um, meant to be used by other people, they're, they're copyrighted images. Um, so it's really best practices with that kind of thing. But um, as far as the question of, I think it was Khan, let me look, it was, Khan Academy, um, KQED, Facing History. Yeah, start bringing that stuff in. Um, a, a safe way to do it. Um, let me go, uh, where am I? I guess I closed out on my book. Let me go um, back to a book here. Let's go back to my Algebra Basics book. And I'm gonna open up a lesson. And so this is in, again, my Algebra Basics for, for High School Equivalency book. This is a lesson on addition and subtraction phrases as expressions. And I'm going to come into my toolbar and I am going to customize this lesson. And I think this should answer the question as far as um, embedding that I'm gonna show you and linking out to things. Um, when you want to customize a lesson, which, which some of you are going to be excited to do this, and others of you are going to say, I'm never touching the lesson. The lesson's fine as is. I don't want to make changes to it. It works for my learners. Whichever camp you fall into is great, okay? If you want to change the title, you can, but I'm just going to go ahead and save this title. And it's going to open up this lesson into, um, you know, a, an editor that looks fairly familiar, like, like, like a Google or a Word doc. And I've got lots of different options for how I create um, the look for my book. So one of the first things that I think we're, we're slowly working on for the adult educators is to update some of these images and some of these situations. So this is, this is what's great with a digital book, right? Um, instead of Coach Taylor's driving a middle school track team to a district competition, um, how about Coach Taylor uh, is you know driving 
uh, the team, we're just gonna get rid of middle school, the track team to a competition. The track team to a, I'm gonna get rid of district competition. And I want to change this image out just because I think it would be cool for them to see um, adults instead of, instead of um, these middle school boys. Under one of your options here, you can kind of scroll through and it'll pop up what each of these are. One of them is to insert or edit an image. And when I do this, it's going to ask you to um, choose the file. So you've downloaded something, um, again, that's copyright compliance, or you might have your own image you took on vacation that you're going to include in some of these books. And uh, so you have, you have options about how this is going to fit in. Um, Pixabay and Unsplash are two websites that are totally free for use. I don't know if you guys want to write those down or feel free in the chat window to type out more. Um, you know, if, if you've been using open resources and you found your favorite image places. Um, but let me come over to Pixabay here. And yeah, I was looking earlier if I wanted to do a uh, track. So here's an image of a track. Uh, oh, this is cool. All right, we've got we've got an adult action shot here. Um, because of the way that Pixabay is licensed, it is free to download these images. And again, CK12 has vetted all of this. I'm gonna choose kind of a, a smaller image, like that would be a massive image that would take over the whole book. I'm just gonna start with a small one and I can adjust that in CK12 later. And I am going to download this image. And it's saying I can donate, which would be great, but I'm not going to today. And instead I am going to copy this text here because um, it tells me who the image is by and where it is from. And it has just downloaded that image right there. All right, so now that I've got a sample image, I am going to um, come back over here and I'm gonna say insert image. I'm gonna choose file. This is gonna pop up everything I've ever downloaded probably. So I'm gonna do this fast. <laughs> and here is this image that I chose that I just downloaded. I do not personally hold the copyright. Um, this is a uh, CC by 4.0, I believe. I could double check that. The source is Pixabay. And here is the thing that I copy and pasted from their website to give credit to the image. Okay. And you've got some image options about how you want this to appear. Um, I'm just going to insert it and see what happens and adjust from there. Oh, it doesn't like that. It doesn't like those HTML tags, actually. So it, my user is Pexels on Pixabay. And I'm going to insert this. And it's thinking about it. And there we go. I've got an image at the top of this page. And now it's talking about Coach Taylor driving the track team to a competition. I've kind of stripped out some of uh, the context and, and you know maybe made this more appealing to the adult learners. Um, so you are able to do that with images. Um, you are also able to embed things that you want to embed. So traditionally, people think of embed codes as uh, YouTube, and that's great. But there's also lots of places to pull embed codes. Um, all of your like Google Slides for you, or even, even PowerPoint, um, there are publish to web options where you can get an embed code for your Google Slide deck. And as you make changes to those Google Slides, they would appear live in this book um, making changes. Um, videos, uh, let me come over to YouTube. Let's see what I was watching earlier. I was watching one of our quick overview videos. Um, which is a playlist I would definitely recommend that you check out because um, it just tells you bite-sized content, how to do things on CK12. Um, but let me open this one, open adding students to a class. And I'm going to pull an embed code from this video. And I'm probably showing you all things that you know. There's a couple different ways to get embed codes. Um, I right click on the video and then go to copy the embed code. And I'm gonna come back to my book and I'm going to paste that embed code right in here. I can press preview and see if this looks like my video, it does. 
and I can insert it into my book. Okay, and this media box, since I'm in draft mode, that just means it's a, it's, it's, it's a video. It's, it's something that can't be displayed right now. But I inserted a video. Um, so back to the question about what can you do? If you find videos that you like on Khan Academy, cool. You can pull the embed code and you can embed those videos right here. Um, if you're wanting to do something like, um, next, read this article from KQED colon, and you have the article here, you have the ability to link to the article over here with insert edit link. So I could copy and paste, you know, that KQ, www.kqed, whatever the, the link is. Um, I would have better text than what I have. And I would insert that link. And then this would be a clickable link. Okay, so embed code, if you want it to like appear um, graphically live, um, big on the page or links for things when that's more appropriate. But since we are linking out to those sites, we're not hosting the video on our own site. We're just linking to the YouTube link um, and we're directing people to the KQED website. Um, all of that's license compliance. Um, they're, they're happy that we're, we're linking to their content and it's getting more views. Um, lots of other things you can do involving, um, like if you're, if you're working on math, we have a math editor and, you know, lots of formatting involved there. You have the standard options of changing the colors, changing the formats. You'll notice that we've got, um, headers and subtitles. You can add in charts if you would like, but, but really the, the advantage is, is that you can come in here and you can say, I just don't you know, I don't, I don't want this video demonstration. So I'm just going to delete this video demonstration. And um, I don't think that they need that many examples. I don't want them to see the answers. I'm going to delete that. Um, we have answers kind of in different places. Uh, I'm going to write in my own instructions here. Uh, make sure you, so you can see what I'm getting at here. You can add in all of these different things to this book. And I am going to finalize my draft because I'm basically done. I can always go in and edit even when I say finalize. And here's how my book's looking so far. Um, I've got my, my image at the top. We've got my embedded video. It's pretty big. So I may choose a smaller embed code, make, shrink that down a little bit, or maybe you want the, the big video here. And then you're going to see some of the other kind of, I can't even remember what all I changed. Um, if I just come down here, you know, you're going to see the things that I typed, make sure you, and then I deleted things at the bottom. So those, those, that's, that's, those are real changes to the lesson. So anybody who had access to my book, once I finalize a draft, they would be seeing the newest lesson in the book. If I keep it in draft mode, because I'm still working on it, you know, like maybe I wasn't finished with this, which clearly it needs a little more help. Um, I would just keep it in draft mode until I'm ready for that to be pushed live to my students. Um, and then I would do uh, a publish, publish on that. A um, couple more things, then I'll, then I'll pause and we'll, we'll take care of anything that's going on in Q&A and chat. Um, your toolbar here, this is what you always come back to as far as like, ah, I want to, I want to make additional changes to um, this book. So I just, or to this lesson, I just come in and I do edit. And then it's once again going to open up this lesson and I am right back in here to do this. Um, you can see there's this box around this image. Um, that's because I chose to make it a figure. Let me just make it an inline image that's going to show, um, it's going to show it without the box. A figure is really something that would have a caption to it where you can type below it. And so let's say that that's the only change that I want to make. I'm going to go ahead and get and finalize my draft again. Why not? Now it's going to be perfect. I just know it. And I will be able to see this image. And the video and everything else. So those are some basics to customizing at the lesson level. Um, I'm going to stop for a second. Let me just do a verbal to Debbie or Netta. Um, are there, what are some things that people are asking in general um, that we could address for, for the group? And then I can also dive into anything specific in the Q&A and, and chat. We have a couple of questions. Um, 
One of them, I don't have an answer. Uh, one more from me, has CK-12 approached state adult ed departments to get on their pre-approved time tracking system yet, or are there plans to? That makes it much more attractive platform for adult ed programs in Arizona, Odysseyware, Burlington English, and EdReady are the three big platforms that are pre-approved for us. Yeah, uh, no is the answer to your question. Uh, we have <laughs> not approached um, state state adult um, ed departments. Um, we're, we're pretty new in this adult ed space. And that's something that definitely going to be talking with our partners at OTAN. And then um, other folks like Jen, I don't know if you're willing to have a conversation about this, but I'd love to just set up a meeting and hear your thoughts on how we can make this easy for approval for um, educators to use it. But, um, but CK-12's kind of philosophy is, is that we don't we don't chase a lot of adoption processes. We don't, we don't really get involved in board of education meetings. We only loosely tie to different standards because those are forever changing depending on you know, the political climate, things like that. Um, we're really a concept-based uh, platform for any users. And um, we kind of rely on our individual advocates uh, across the world to bring this to the attention of um, the appropriate administrators and try to lobby for the books. But we would be happy to help with that process. And particularly if you had some strategy involved, um, we, we want to make it as easy as possible for all of you. So wh whatever you need, let's get in touch and let's talk about that. And I can add to that, Lindsay. You know, here in California, we don't necessarily need, um, we don't have a pre-approved list, right? And so that makes it a little challenging. We have these discussions with our ideal consortium members with World Ed and our partners. And so Sure. I mean, Texas, Arizona, there are these pre-approved lists of, of um, curriculum and, and, um, and resources to use with adult learners. But in California, we do not have that um, because we have 800,000 students. Um, so and, and so each program area and each delivery is a little different. Now, we do use kind of the same idea, the Ida Seaware, the Burlington English, the um, and then we use, you know, and then we see something like CK-12 that we know with OTAN's effort with open educational resources, where we immediately want to gravitate and grab and see where, where we fit in that equation and how we can um, provide those resources through um, the assistance and, and support and partnership with CK-12. So it, it's a larger discussion with the we were state leadership project through the California Department of Ed. Um, the pre-approval list does not exist in California, um, but there's definitely, you know, promising practices and, and use cases uh, with different type of curriculum. And so with open educational resources, uh, it's a, just another effort here in California. And so, um, but, you know, it's tricky. Pre-approved lists are tricky and then open lists are pretty tricky as well. So awesome. I'll hand me, it back to Lindsay. Yeah, let me take on the, um, so Marsha, I'm gonna take a stab at your question. Let me know if this isn't exactly what you're asking. Um, but we also have this issue of you notice that a lot of our content um, that's been contributed over the years is not in a Flexbook 2.0. It looks, it, looks, it looks different because of when it was created. Um, so that sixth grade, I'm just going to come back to the sixth grade language arts book that we were looking at earlier. And you can see that this is in um, a different, different view. This is actually a totally different CK12 platform. And we are encouraging everybody to like upgrade to a 2.0. And so Marsha, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but this, this applies to a lot of you, I think. You're gonna find some content and you're gonna say, okay, how do I get this into my Flexbook 2.0? And it's the same process um, where before you were using that toolbar on the right side, right now the toolbar is on the left side. But if you liked all of this and you wanted to add this book to a Flexbook textbook, I can add, I'm going to add this just to my very precious IB film studies book. Um, I'm going to add all this content in there. Um, or I could also create from scratch. So if you're, if you're looking to take this book and make it a 2.0, I could say make it a Flexbook 2.0. Um, well, now that I'm involved in this, I guess I will do this. So I'm going to call this uh, ELA um, and say, okay. And so it just added this to my book. And so I'm like, all right, well, what do I do now? I go to my library and that's where I should find anything that I've saved. Here is my ELA. It is now a Flexbook 2.0. So I'm at least in the right platform that's gonna have the most updated um, resources, updated capabilities. 
And now I'd come down here and I would kind of clean this up because this has got, like I said, I can tell that this is three or four of CK 12's books that have kind of been mashed together for the sixth grade book. Um, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to edit and we go back into that process of, um, of, of deleting things, adding things, um, adding new chapters, searching CK 12. So two options to do this, either search from CK 12. I could have searched for language arts, which is super broad. So it's going to pull up, you know, who knows what um, I could search for things from my library. Um, and then I could find individual things. Like if I want to go to an individual lesson and um, I want to add in, again, we don't have a whole lot of language arts. Um, I can add in something to my book this way, but sometimes I find it easier to find the resource on CK12 and then press that add to Flexbook 2.0 and it just comes into the new platform. Um, so Marsha, let me know if you're getting like weird save er errors, um, uh, see if you can give me some more details about it and I'll try to help you. It, it could be a technical thing that involves troubleshooting beyond me, um, but that's in general a 1.0 to a 2.0. Um, uh, question about the answer keys. Because these books were created by a lot of different users, unfortunately the, I'm gonna just leave. Um, unfortunately, the answer keys, I believe for adult ed are kind of in different places. And so this is something, um, Debbie, we haven't even talked about this, but this is something I want to work on of, of standardizing where to find the, um, where to find the answer keys. Um, CK12 often puts them in an, an early chapter. Uh, sometimes they're in the resources for a lesson. Like if I come into this lesson, I'm gonna to come to the toolbar and I'm gonna check resources and see what's in there. No answer key there. I picked a great example, didn't I? Um, check the resources for some answer keys. Um, for science, that's often at the main um, chapter level. You'll see some resources listed there. Um, our newest math books have been created with some teacher editions that we can talk about translating into adult education space as well. Um, and then if you run across something and you're like, I really can't figure out where you guys shoved the answer keys, because um, it's usually somewhere in resources, uh, please shoot me an email and I'll get you an answer to that ASAP. Um, looks like a couple of people have questions about Flexi. This is our friend Flexi down here in the corner. Um, Flexi's pretty new to CK12 and he is learning all kinds of stuff. Um, right now he's very smart at science. He's not as good at math. Um, because he has a harder time kind of understanding the equations and things like that. Um, but he is helpful to the students who are asking questions. Um, let me let me go to a science book because it, it kind of helps show it better. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick a pick a lesson here that this um, I don't know what I'm clicking on. Sorry, this is an adult ed, but this is just a, a flexi guy. Um, when I click on flexi. He says, hey, I'm your personal assistant. What do you want to know? Um, and so I can ask him questions. Um, he's super smart at things that are over here on the page. Uh, we get a list of, of what students are asking. And sometimes it's like, why do giraffes have spots? Um, it's, it's, it's an engagement tool. It's to try to get your students intrigued. And also, if they truly are stumped, to try to help them. Um, Flexi is also where you, as the teacher, can remind your students that they have something that's due. So you can push out reminders through Flexi. And then you as an educator, um, we are training Flexi to answer all of your questions about like, how do I create a this? How do I edit this? Um, he's going to know all of the teacher commands as well to help your navigation on CK12, kind of like a support buddy for teachers and then a, a learning buddy for, um, for our students. So maybe that helps with the flexi guy. Um, anything else going on in the chat? Looks like you guys have covered, you guys are covering a couple other questions here. Um, Lindsay, there's a question. It says, it looks like these flex books are basically consumable textbooks that students read and work through. Are there questions or quizzes that go along with them? How does flexi give harder or easier content questions? Um, sure. So these adult ed books specifically, um, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by consumable as far as like we're hoping to make them more interactive where they are, they're interacting, they're doing things with these books. Um, 
but flexi flexi doesn't really impact what's happening with the learner in the book so much you know again he's kind of like a study buddy type thing um how does he give harder easier content or questions where that comes into play is with some adaptive practice so showed you this last week haven't really talked about it today but attached to most of the lessons you're going to see this view practice button and you can come in here and go into adaptive practice where we're trying to get 10 correct and here's where flexi is going to give students hints if they need hints and this adaptive practice is what's going to get progressively harder um, or easier depending on how the student's doing it kind of starts them off at an easy medium question and then if they're getting it right um, great if they're not they get a second try at it there we go now i'm one for ten um, i can also see full step-by-step -step solutions um, i can stop and come back to this this practice at any time so this is a great tool for helping students who are at different levels um, trying to learn independently and then all of the um the there's often related content that's in the books that are extension activities of additional videos and things that can help students as they're trying to get um, ahead or behind or as they're as they're as they're trying to catch up um, or move ahead to to the next lesson Okay, I think I'm gonna um, show a few additional things. I know we're kind of approaching the, the end of the time here. So, so get in your last Q&A questions here. Um, and let me just give you a little bit more information and then talk to you about what next week is gonna look like. Um, on your action items, again, don't forget that you can download your lesson as a PDF. What it does is it has to generate and so it emails it to you um, through CK12, but that's a printable PDF. Um, of course, you're always welcome to take screenshots or just go up to file print in your browser, um, but this will give you the, 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 clean, the, the clean PDF. Oh, Netta just said not next week. Sorry guys, not next week. We're gonna skip a week. It's the 28th. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we you actually have two weeks to like work on customizing a book before we come back together. Um, so yeah, talk about that in a second. Um, and then assigning these lessons. If you if you have created something that you want to share with your students, remember that you can come up here to the assign button. And if you are using Google Classroom or CK12, you will do it right here. Um, I'm just going to, you know, connect to my Google Classroom. It's going to pull up my existing rosters, and I'm going to assign this to my students. Um, or I can use the CK12 class. Again, I'm going to assign it to my fall 2020 class. I'm going to give it a due date, some instructions. Or if you're in Canvas or Schoology, you will go into Canvas or Schoology, and you will um, be assigning through Canvas and Schoology. Okay, we have some great resources that I'll, I'll put in the chat window unless one of my colleagues here can get it as far as um, the LMS, the using Google Classroom, using Canvas, using Schoology that I think help gives, helps give you more information about that. Um, question on can you, can you print the PDF for students? Absolutely, we understand that, um, that there's, there's access issues. Um, when you do print to PDF, obviously the downside is that any of the interactivity that's in the book will not appear in the PDF. It's just gonna look kind of like a blank spot. So where this is you know, designed for uh, students to try this GeoGebra activity and you know, manipulate things, answer questions here, um, this is this is not going to print out in the same way that you would want it to, but it definitely for those of you who just who need the content, um, you know, downloading the PDF is going to be better than not having any content, obviously. Um, but we are optimized for the virtual space as much as possible. Um, Lindsay, there is a question. Yeah. At the last session, you shared a great resource, Pronounce, Google extension for reading text to students who had dyslexia. I tried it for adaptive practice. It didn't work. Is there another resource that will read adaptive practice questions to a student? That's interesting. So Pronounce, that must have been um, something that, that you OTAN ladies suggested, because um, I, don't, I don't really know the inner workings of Pronounce. Um, this, this question we get at CK12 a lot is, do you read to the students? And our answer is no. Um, whatever you're using in your Chrome browser um, usually works with CK12. Having said that, I'm intrigued by what you put. I never really thought about this. I think your any of your browser add-ons that you're using for speech to text, it's going to work with the Flexbook lesson content. 
but our adaptive practice is actually like it's 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 in a different you know not a different platform but it's it's in its own um it's it's created differently that i'm guessing that those readers have trouble knowing what to do with our adaptive practice questions so charlotte um that's i would love to follow up with you actually and i'm going to ask um, my teammates if there's any work around to that but again it might be just more complicated google translate doesn't work with our adaptive practice either um because it's it's it, the way it's created basically thank you yeah thank you uh, i'm not sure i gave you the answer you wanted but um let me uh show a few more things so under the explore menu again, um, I've been referring to some certified educators, uh, Netta, Debbie, both certified educators, which is great. Um, we used to be a live program that happened during the summer and then we worked hard to automate it. And it's a free program, self-paced. You can join it with the intent to go through the 10 different lessons and learn more about Flexbooks um, and adaptive practice and everything that comes with it. Or you can join um, and with no intention of finishing it and just use it as a resource because it's got really great videos and information of how to do different things on our site. Um, so feel free if you're intrigued and like wanting to enter the CK12 world, this is a great place to do it. You can read more about the information here. You know, we do give you a certificate if you need hours um, and and your districts approve that. Um, we also have this alumni network where anybody who has an envelope next to their name um, is ready to be emailed to answer your questions. This is great for networking as well. Um, and of course, we always have all these different videos and things like that. Um, for the 28th, when we all reconvene, um, my hope is that you, get, you guys have seen a lot the past couple of weeks. You know, you've seen You've seen our simulations, browse pages, our Plex, um, all of these different environments, our Flexbook 2.0. Um, now, now you need to think about what's gonna work for your situation. Um, if you are just, you know, hey, I don't wanna deal with the books, but I love, I love your simulations. I wanna use this with my um, learners. Like who's gonna make it to the elevator first, Erwin or Ruthie? This is exciting. And it's, it's reading to me, you probably can't hear it. Um, but I can grab this URL and just share it in, in my classroom environments and the students can do it. I can assign it. It's got worksheets. It even has an embed code. So um, Debbie was asking me about this earlier because she said, what if I find some simulations that are going to work for like her cosmetology book? Um, I don't think she necessarily wants this one. But um, when I click embed code, I can copy this embed code for the simulation. And I have, this is Debbie's book. I'm gonna customize Debbie's start of a cosmetology book. And I'm gonna throw the simulation in one of her lessons on skin health. Um, remember, since I have customized this, this is now in my library. It does not mess up Debbie's book. Um, Debbie's book will remain as is in Debbie's account. This is truly just mine. So when I choose to use that embed code box and embed a simulation, it's just going to be visible in my account. So I'm going to just finalize this so you can see that we have skin health, shower, and then the robots trying to go to the elevator. It's a very cohesive lesson. Um, so I want you to explore these types of things. I want you to check out the adult ed books first and see if we have something that's going to work for you. And if so, click on it, customize it, give it a different title, maybe at a minimum rearrange that scope and sequence. And perhaps you're done at that point, okay? For those of you who are saying, hey, you don't really have what I'm looking for in its entirety, I want to create a, um, I want to create a new book. Um, you come out here to your library and you go to create new and you create a new Flexbook 2.0 and you're off and running, um, bringing Lindsay, in your resources. Lindsay, we have two more questions. Yes. Is there any way for multiple teachers to add a Flexbook that my school creates in a way which allows the original Flexbook creator to be able to edit the Flexbook and have those <laughs> changes reflected in the multiple teachers Flexbooks? Dylan, sounds like you're asking more about like, hey, we want to do what we can do on Google Docs and like all be collaborating live. Um, that's not quite how this works um, for lots of reasons. Um, we have teachers all over who are collaborating on the books, but they're not doing it in real time on our site. 
So as you just saw, when I press customize on Debbie's cosmetology book, it's, it's made a copy in my library. It now says that it's by me. It's got Debbie as an author, but, um, but we're on two different paths with two di different books, okay? Now, if I wanted to just make all kinds of changes to the to skin, and then I say, hey, Debbie, I, my skin health is better because it's got the robots in it. And she's like, oh, that's cool, Lindsay, you did that. What Debbie could do is she could come in here and go, oh, I like those robots. I'm going to take your lesson and I'm going to add it to my Flexbook. And she could choose her cosmetology book and her library, and she could steal my lesson back, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, we, have, we have better practices if you are truly gonna be working with colleagues or um, you know, people across, across the state or across the country, however you're gonna do it. Um, we have more specific, specific, informa specific information about um, you know, how, we, how we recommend starting with a, a certain account, um, and then best practices of, you know, one person kind of playing the role of the project manager and then other people working on one chapter at a time and then submitting it to the project manager who finalizes drafts. Um, I think that's a little overwhelming for uh, today, but I'll come armed with more information on that um, by the 28th. For those of you who say, I want to, I want to edit, I want to collaborate, um, we'll, we'll help you make that work. One last question. Yes. Is there a site that has links to non-flash interactives for science? Uh, well, our, I don't know if you're asking about our interactives. Um, our interactives are HTML5. And so my, my understanding is that they're a lot better than Flash. Again, I'm an English teacher. I don't, I don't live in that world. But these should all load properly. There's no additional extensions. They're going to work on any of your browsers, any of your, um, any of your different devices. Okay, I think with, right. the, with the three minutes left, again, my, my, my parting words for you before I turn it back over to the, to the um, OTAN ladies is that, um, here, I'll turn my camera back on and say hi for a minute. Um, explore, explore the site, figure out what you wanna use, try some different things, try some of the things that I showed you. And then in two weeks, when we come back together, um, we're gonna, we're gonna bring on um, Shanna, who we referenced last time, who helped create a lot of these books. Um, she's gonna talk to you about her process she went through specifically of converting CK12 books into GED books. Um, and she's done a lot as far as swapping out images and swapping out names and you know uh, of things that I think you'll be really interested in hearing about. Um, and then we're gonna do sort of a, a support, a showcase, a wrap up of, you know, what about publishing? What about getting it on a school's page? You know, a little more about insights, just anything else that you guys are having trouble with. And in the interim, um, I'm going to once again, post my email address. Um, you can just email me directly. If you have CK12 questions, it's going in the chat window right now. <laughs>